Persistent disk snapshots are one of the most essential tools and features that you will need in GCP or Google Cloud Platform. Not only they allow you to recover your VMs and workloads, but they are also considered a building block of many automation and DR scenarios. In this video, I will show you how you can create snapshots for your Google Compute Engine VMs either manually or automatically. So stay tuned and like the video to help it reach more people and don't forget to subscribe as well. So snapshots are your first option of backup in GCP and if you don't really want to use any third party softwares or solutions then you may get along using only snapshots along some other scripts to automate transferring your OS level backups into Google Cloud Storage. They are very easy to set up and relatively cheap as well in terms of billing and cost and with a good retention policy you may end up with a very minimal cost of a very strong backup solution or process. And in general, snapshots will be able to help you in the following areas. First of all, as mentioned, they are used as a form of backup for your VMs. When your VM is crashed, then you can almost immediately recover your VM from the recent snapshot and basically you can integrate it with your third party backup solution by creating a full uh, snapshot schedule every day or multiple times per day so that you can have multiple full recovery points either daily or weekly or whatever you know you see fit for your workload and case. And they are used for many DR scenarios in GCP and if you check the default guide of or the native guide of GCP on how to do DR and how to design DR, you will find snapshots are the core of these guides and of these activities. This is something that I will be talking about in coming videos in this channel. I will be showing you how you can design a full DR scenario and solution on GCP without using third party solutions. Of course, it has its own pros and cons and I will just show you the DIY way of this, <laughs> the do it yourself method. Of course, using a third party solution will give you more control and more features in terms of RPO and RTO and all of this. But then it's good idea to understand the process, how it works on the most basic form and on the most simplest form as well. So that then you can decide if you want to take it further by using third party solutions and software. And also this is going to be a quick way for you to spin or test a development environment of your existing production workloads. All it takes is that you take a snapshot of the current workload and then you create another VM, whether in a different VPC or a different subnet or a different region, or even you can take it into a completely different project by creating an image from that snapshot. Persistent disk snapshots are also considered persistent disks in terms of billing and the actual backend that is powering them. And since they are just to be used when needed, it does not really matter on which infrastructure that they are being stored, meaning you don't really care if they are SSD based objects or snapshots or if they are standard disk snapshots they are just snapshots they are just backups for you to use whenever you need and you can restore them on an ssd disk or you can restore them to an ssd disk or an extreme disk if you want this high level performance as well and another thing about snapshot is that they can be either regional or multi-regional in terms of availability and this is a very important feature and a very important aspect of snapshots because of DR and availability considerations as well. And this is going to be very visible in the coming videos that I mentioned a while ago. Now, think of a VM that you have in a single zone such as Europe West one. And then once you create a snapshot for this VM, you will either choose to have the snapshot either regionally available or multi-regionally available and if you choose to have that snapshot available on the region only in a single region in Europe West one then what if the zone goes down where your VM is working what if your VM is in Europe West one dash B and this zone goes down for whatever reason then because you have a snapshot that is regionally available in the whole Europe West one 
meaning it's also available in the other two zones in Europe West 1, then you can easily recover this VM into Europe West 1D or C or whatever region that or whatever zone that would be available by the time <laughs> you're going to do this. But what if the whole region goes down due to a natural disaster or a man-made disaster? Then if you stay with your regionally available snapshot, then basically you're down and you have to wait for Google to restore the service to that region and you don't really have the option to do anything. But then if you have multi-regional snapshot, it means that your snapshot is in Europe West 1, but it's also in other regions such as Europe West 2 or Europe West 3. So then you can recover your VM into a different region while the original region or while Europe West 1 is being recovered by Google and you really don't care then how long it will take them to recover that region unless of course you have other services you couldn't move out then that's a different talk so it's a great idea to consider this also in your design for the availability and recovery options in GCP now, if you want to create a snapshot, then you have two options for this. You can either create a manual snapshot or you can create it manually, or you can create it through a snapshot schedule. Now, if you want to create a snapshot manually, then you just go to whatever VM that you want to create its snapshot. Considering one of these, for example, I want to create a snapshot for my Minecraft server, then I can just go inside the VM or I can go to the disks and then I go to the disk that I want to choose so in this Minecraft VM there are two disks the OS disk and the data disk where it stores my word and where it stores the saves and all of this of course this is the most important thing and as you can see it's an SSD persistent disk so that I can get good performance all I have to do here is I go inside the disk and then I click create snapshot and then of course it helps to have a good name for this snapshot for example a date or something like snapshot sorry so today is 10th of october and then you choose the source disk now the source disk will be selected for you automatically because you clicked on that disk and then you 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 select or you clicked create a snapshot and then this is the option to select where you want your snapshot to be available either multi-regional it means it's going to store it in multi-regions in Europe in the European Union or if you choose regional then it will ask you in which region you want to store the snapshot of course you can choose whatever region but then based on the source disk location it automatically selected Europe West 1 so again if you're looking into putting the considerations of the availability and recovery you might want to do multi-regional of course it it's going to be a little bit expensive it's not that much expensive but then you will be having the benefit of having your data and your workload available even if it is a disaster on google site and that's it you click create and the snapshot will be created now if you notice it has taken me to the snapshots page and these are the two snapshots that i have this is my snapshot that I have just created and you can go inside it to create a VM from this one and I'm not going to do this now I will leave it to a different video but then the other way to create snapshots is by using a snapshot schedule which is in my opinion the best option and the most recommended option that you can have because you can just set up the schedule do your own frequency and retention and attach disks to this schedule and that's it you forget about it unless of course you want to review the performance of the snapshot schedule so basically to do this you just go to create a snapshot schedule in the snapshots page that is under the storage in the compute engine menu or items so you go to create snapshot schedule and in the snapshot schedule you will have a few properties or a few stuff to change first of all a name it helps to have a good name for the schedule. In my case, I usually do for my customers. When, when I work for my customers, I actually create a default schedule for every single project that I work with because we use it as a form of a basic, a very basic and a very primitive backup. 
so that we can have a recovery point if something goes wrong on the customer side or in our side while we're doing the implementation. So in my case, I'll do it something actually like this. So default, default schedule, just to indicate that this is something default we use for all of the projects. Again, it's depending on the region. Usually I like to store my stuff in Europe West one and you can choose also where you want to have it either multi-regional or regional. So if you do multi-regional, it's going to give you the option to select the European Union, Asia or US. Then these are the most important properties and information or, va or values that you need to change. So the schedule frequency is either hourly, daily or weekly. I like always to set a daily schedule with a time frame out of the working hours. For example, something like very early in the morning, like 1 a.m. and between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. Then the retention, I would just leave it to the default, meaning that I will have 14 days of daily snapshots. Every day there will be one single snapshot. And then I can just click create if I don't want to worry about these other options. So basically the deletion rule means that when you delete the source disk for any snapshot, then it's going to ask you what do you want to do with these snapshots. It's a very good idea to keep the snapshots, not delete the snapshots, because I've seen a lot of cases and incidents where people have deleted disks by mistake and with them the snapshots were deleted and they didn't have any form of recovery and it was a big disaster. So it's a good idea to keep this option selected and then manually come in and uh, delete the snapshots if you really, really, really don't want them. <laughs> and that's it. You can add a level of course for billing and for you know more visibility on where these snapshots are coming from and then you can click create. Now, once the snapshot schedule is created, this is your first step. The second step is to attach disks to this snapshot schedule. You can see the schedule here snapshot schedule tab then to attach disks to this you go to the disks again find the disks that you want to attach to this schedule for example the data disk for my minecraft server you go inside it and then you go to edit that's hidden here i think <laughs> then in the edit you just select the snapshot schedule from the list here or from the menu and you click save this is going to attach the disk to the snapshot schedule and starting from the next uh, capture point or the sna next snapshot time, the data or the, the first snapshot will be available for you to work with. So that's it. I hope that this is a useful video for you. And I really hope that you're already utilizing snapshots in your Google Cloud Platform environment. Otherwise, I would highly and strongly recommend that you start doing this as soon as you can. Because trust me, and I've been through this a lot, a single snapshot can save your day if something goes wrong, either intentionally or unintentionally. Having a recovery point that costs you basically nothing will be very helpful for you and you will it, it will just save your life whenever you need it, whenever you least expect it as well. So if you have any comment, please don't hesitate to put it in the comment section. And if this video was useful for you, please like it and please like it anyways to help other people find it quickly. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell button so that you can be notified whenever I put any new content. Also check the rest of my channel with the GCP related content and the Google Workspace related content. If you are an existing Google Workspace admin or considering to be a Google Workspace admin, you might also be interested in my Google Workspace admin course on Udemy. That is a complete full comprehensive course about all of the activities and everything that you can think of. If you want to manage and administer Google Workspace for an organization, or even if you want to deploy it for other organizations as well. So please check it out. I really encourage you to do that. And I'm looking forward for your feedback. You can get it at a discounted price through the link in the video description. So until I put a new video, thank you very much for your time and thank you for viewing.